I'm Director of Government Relations for the National Shooting Sports Foundation. We are the trade association for the firearms industry. We represent manufacturers, retailers, ranges across the country and here in Maryland. We are based in Newtown, Connecticut, wow. two miles away from Sandy Hook. It's been a very difficult time for our organization, for the people there. It's been very personal. For weeks after that tragedy, I question what I do as a lobbyist for the firearms industry. But I realized nothing that I do or stand for could have changed this. This is a mentally insane individual that did a horrific crime. Connecticut has an assault weapons ban. They have registration. They knew who owned those firearms. The only way that could have been avoided is locking up those firearms so that the person did not have access to them or not even have them in the household. That's a decision that the mother should have made. The firearms industry in Maryland is a very large economic impact. And if you look at this bill that the governor proposes, it will have a detrimental effect to our manufacturers and to our retailers here in Maryland. The firearms industry supports close to 3,300 jobs in Maryland and close to $500 million in economic impact. Yeah. The state of Maryland takes in $35 million in state taxes from the firearms industry. Let's look at the two pieces of this legislation that's going to affect the manufacturers the most, and that's a magazine capacity ban and a rifle ban. If we take a look at the newly released FBI crime statistics for 2011, there are a grand total of 398 homicides in the state of Maryland. 17 of them were done with hands, fists, or feet. 17. 75 of them were done with knives or other cutting instruments. How many do you think were done with rifles? A grand total of two. The exact instrument that you are trying to ban in the state of Maryland was used in two crimes out of 400. Shotguns were five as well. So think about that for a second. 17 were done with hands and feet and two with rifles. The magazines that were currently used in Tucson, Aurora, and Newtown are all currently banned in the state of Maryland. You have a 20 round restriction. You're now looking to go to a 10 round restriction, an arbitrary number. Why 10 rounds? Nobody's going to give me a good answer as why 10 rounds. It didn't work during the federal assault weapons ban, and it hasn't worked on the state level. It is an arbitrary number, and people will say, well, it's 10 rounds. We'll never go any lower. New York State just passed a seven round restriction. So the first time someone commits a crime in Maryland with a 10 rounder, you're going to go to seven. Five, four, whatever decide that year. Well, your, your time has expired, but let me ask a question. No problem. You're coming from Newtown, Connecticut. Yes, sir. Tell us that an assault weapons ban wouldn't have saved lives in Newtown, Connecticut? Connecticut has an assault weapons ban, and it and, has been in place. And, and wouldn't, if it were effective, it mm -hmm. would have prevented most of those deaths, wouldn't it? How it's not effective because the deaths occurred, it, sir. It, because the deaths happened, the tragedy was occurred. his mother in lawful possession of the Bushmaster that that massacred those kids. She was in possession of the handguns, the rifle, and she also had possession and, of shotguns as and, well. And was she lawfully in possession of the assault weapon that killed those kids? Yes, she was lawfully possessing that. So then they and did not have an assault weapons ban that prohibited her from owning that weapon, right? Well, I think we're we're dealing with semantics here. No, yes, we're sir. not. We're really not. The question, mm -hmm. I mean, the point is you come from Newtown, Connecticut, to tell us that an assault weapons ban that just killed 20, uh, that an assault weapon that just killed 26 people in your hometown, 20 of them six- and seven-year-old kids, mm -hmm. that if we ban that weapon, it won't do any good. And 
in, in, because it didn't do any good in Connecticut. Is there that is an assault the message that you came down here to give us? You are, there is an assault weapons ban in Connecticut. You are simply looking at so the cosmetic words, features of a rifle. You're simply, by looking at the cosmetic features of a rifle, an assault weapon is a fully automatic modern sporting rifle. A right, fully and automatic. the one that he used had the capacity to spray 30 bullets in just a couple of seconds, didn't it? No. 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 That was in his trunk. Did it or not? No, it did not, sir. So every pull of the trigger, a round is expended. Yeah. That is what and a semi-automatic how, how many times do you think you needed to pull, the, how fast do you think you can pull the trigger to, to fire off 30 rounds? No the, different than a handgun, which you can, can you Can you do it in less than 10 seconds? Uh, no. I don't no. think so. You less cannot than fire 15? I'm not going to get into the, the time frame of how fast you well, can fire a, a round. It's no different than if we're looking at magazine capacity and how fast someone can switch so a magazine. If he had only had a magazine capacity of, say, 10 rounds, mm -hmm. would he have been able to kill that many people that quickly? Well, quite possibly. Let, we're dealing with people that want to commit crimes. They're not going to go, if they're going to commit a crime, they're not going to swap out their 20-rounder, the 30-rounder, to go to a 10-rounder to comply really? with the law. <laughs> let's, let's, let's take a look at this. This is the New York Times from Thursday, January 31st. Front page. Obviously, me, being involved in the firearms industry, is the only one that's going to recognize this. You have insurgents in Syria that have an AK-47 with two 20-round magazines duct taped together. Yep. Why do they do that? So they can simply switch out the magazines faster. It doesn't matter. They, they, they're criminals. Well, you need to understand that they're not going to abide by bans. So the, the police chief of Baltimore County uh, testified before Congress, and uh, he also spoke at Governor O'Malley's uh, press conference. And he talked about the shooter of Congressman uh, Gabriel Giffords, mm -hmm. and he said that the reason that the guy was stopped I believe it was that shooting, was because he had to he had to reload and somebody tackled him while he was reloading. So do you think it makes no difference when somebody has a 30-clip magazine as opposed to a 10-clip magazine? But we're not talking about 30-rounders here in Maryland because you already well, have okay, a 20-round Well, okay, let's say 20 band. and 10. Okay. So you're saying the difference between 20 and 10? It's No, I'm asking number. you. Do yes. you think it makes no difference? No, it does not make a difference. So, uh, because the, the criminals are not going to abide by it. Why, why is a criminal going to say, so I'm going to get a 10-rounder if I'm going to commit a crime? If we take your position, we shouldn't pass any laws because criminals aren't going to abide by them. That's right. Is that right? <laughs> okay. Correct. That's Got it. <laughs> Senator Raskin followed by Senator Shank. So just to follow up on that last point, so you, you would favor lifting the ban on machine guns, for example? Machine no. Guns. Fully automatic machine guns are, they have been... Since 1934, the Gun Control Act, they have been federally regulated. Civilians can own them if they get a $200 ATF tax stamp, get approval from their law enforcement, and go through the process. Well, would you favor that same process for semi-automatic weapons? No, I would not. Well, I guess, I guess I'm looking for what's the distinction. I mean, you seem to be saying mm -hmm. that the criminals are going to use what, what, the weapons, they'll get whatever weapon that they can in order to accomplish their mm -hmm. evil deeds. So therefore, all we're doing is we're denying the law-abiding population of weapons Correct. by banning them. So why not lift the ban on machine guns? Well, that's a federal issue. Is that's not a state issue. Well, so, so you don't take a position on federal law? I, I'm not going to say. I'm, a, I'm the director of state affairs, so I'm not going to okay, decide so, what the federal government And no one else is. in your company takes a position on that? We have federal lobbyists. I'm sure we so can get you. I, get, I mean, the, 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 I guess the point is, is that you see, I mean, you, by your testimony, you accepted the fact that there's a federal ban on machine guns. <laughs> And that's part of the statutory regime. Mm -hmm. At least what I've read about Newtown was that that was a 30, that, that, that was a 30 capacity. Is that not right? Uh, unfortunately, nobody has seen the police report. We don't even know if the firearms were locked, if they were accessed. They have not, they have not released the police report in Connecticut yet. And even Connecticut legislators are a little annoyed with the fact that they don't know the mental health or anything that occurred with the situation. So what, what you're hearing is probably very similar to what I'm hearing, and that's through the media. So I'm, I'm not privy to what occurred. I've heard 30 rounders, yes, sir. All right. So, so in general, what your policy prescription is what? In other words, it, it doesn't make sense to try to limit uh, access to any, you know, heavy-duty, what we're calling assault weapons. Some people would call them something else. But if you don't want to do that, what, do you have a policy prescription, or is this just a cost of doing business? I mean, we want to be honest about what's taking place in our country. This is not a lone event, this massacre. I mean, no. we, you know, we've had it in Tucson, Arizona. We've had it in a Sikh 
Temple in Wisconsin. We had it in Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. Dozens of people being killed. We had it again in Newtown. We don't want to see one of these in Maryland. So is there, are, are you here to favor any policy or are you just opposed to any regulation? We are opposed to regulations on the cosmetic features of firearms. If you look in 2003, the Center for Disease Control did a study of 51 gun control initiatives, um, basically after the federal assault weapons ban on the, on the, on the federal level. Um, and they realized that there was not a attributable decrease in the crime rate because of gun control laws and especially the assault weapons ban. Well, are you familiar with the RAM Corporation study, which showed that there was a decrease in assault weapon related crimes during the decade long ban by Congress? I would question you as to who funded that study, first off. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you for your testimony. Okay. Senator Shank. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to return to the uh, question and answer that, that you started going into regarding the facts and circumstances mm -hmm. regarding the horrible tragedy in Connecticut. And, and, and that is to apply Senate Bill 281, which hopefully you are familiar with, to our current situation in Maryland and further amplify your answer in that I see on page 9 of the bill it, there is certainly a, a ban on the future sale of, 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 of so-called assault weapons, but it says that a person who lawfully possessed an assault uh, and who registers um, may continue to possess that particular uh, firearm. So. I don't really see anything in this bill either that would have stopped somebody if they lawfully uh, mm -hmm. possessed it. So that is indeed your understanding yes, of, of what occurred in Connecticut? If, if you look at the rifles that are currently for sale in the state of Maryland, they're the mo most highly regulated firearms, right? You have the seven-day waiting period, you have the background check, and the Maryland State Police can testify to the fact that they know everyone that owns those firearms in the state of Maryland. They know their address, they know their individual, they know when they purchased them, they know those firearms exist. Mm -hmm. So. By passing a law now for a instrument that was used in two, two crime, two homicides in 2011, it's not going to do anything because the Maryland State Police know who owns these firearms. Now, if you look, if you look at the magazine portion of the bill, the 20 to 10 rounds, the section that says in the commission of a violent crime or felony, we are 100% supportive of that. If you use a magazine in the commission of a crime, a felony, robbing a bank, what have you, and you want to increase the penalty, make a mandatory minimum, that is a criminal committing a crime. We would be fully supportive of that. But to go after the manufacturers and the retailers in the state by banning the possession, the retail sale of that, it, it will not solve any crime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Jacobs. I, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what an assault weapon mm -hmm. is and isn't. What we're talking about today, the machine guns mm -hmm. that they've outlawed mm -hmm. back in the 80s and before, those are assault weapons, aren't they? That is correct. That's the that's the true definition of an assault weapon. But under this bill, one of my guns, after October 31st, that holds 17 rounds in its magazine mm -hmm. will become an assault weapon, mm -hmm. according to this. Yes. Semi-automatic gun is not an assault weapon. Explain why a semi-automatic gun mm -hmm. is it's a cosmetic difference. Mm -hmm. Explain the difference. Semi-automatic firearm is with every pull of a trigger, a bullet is expended. Now, this bill is going after the cosmetic features of the firearm in order to ban a specific class of firearms because there's no definition. You cannot define what the firearm is that they want to ban. Now, if you look at the legislation, the most popular turkey hunting shotgun. I was going to ask that question. The most pr t popular turkey hunting shotguns in the U.S. all look like this, yep. camouflage, and have a pistol grip. This will be banned in the state of Maryland. Um, and Benelli being one of them, which is um, the uh, sister company of Beretta. You'll be banning those firearms here in the state. It is basically going <laughs> after the cosmetic features of the firearm. Now, there's also a gun that they use for national competitions. Mm -hmm. um, which, mm -hmm. And it has, it shoots five rounds. Mm -hmm. And the five rounds are in front of the trigger. Mm -hmm. Under this bill, that will become an assault weapon, correct? It will because most of those rifles used in those competitions. This is a pistol. Mm -hmm. 
Well, a very the pistols, expensive pistol. The pistols and even the rifles used in those competitions have what you would call a <coughs> thumbhole stock, which is defined in here, which will once again be banned. Which um, is to help people like me or people smaller than me mm -hmm. hold the gun steady. Correct. It's, correct. it's a safety feature for shooters so that they can safely shoot the firearm. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much.